Welcome back to the Fear Itself podcast where we're reviewing horror movies and talking about the different themes and the different modalities in horror movies. My name is Oliver. I'm Anthony. And uh, today we are reviewing some more J-horror. Uh, last week we reviewed the 2004's The Grudge. That's right. With Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yes. And jumping back on uh, a really awesome movie. Another one. The Ring. That's right. Another with, with the remake of it. Correct? The remake yeah, of The Ring, so. of course. Yeah. Another one of those ones. No, I have to admit, this one's probably more more scary in parts, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and the, the story of it is kind of more, I guess, because I think you brought this up maybe last time, mm -hmm. but we were talking about how like the grudge still takes place in Japan, like yeah. even the American <laughs> version. But then this one actually is like truly adapted to an American mm -hmm. setting, which I think is, makes it quite a bit better for that. So I thought that was really good. Yeah, they do a lot of adapting in this, and they really stay true to the original source material, too. That's right. Uh, it really is a horror movie, but it's really embedded in sort of a detective uh, a detective sort of narrative as well. Yeah, some kind of mystery, right? Like we're trying to figure out like what's, yeah. what's going on here, like why is this thing here, and where this videotape come from. And talk about one of the most famous movies of all time. Mm -hmm. Really, it made such an impact on horror cinema, and it is just yeah. uh, it, it, it really left a, a mark on yeah. the genres. And, and you know, since it's so early, I think it's the first it's the first J horror mm -hmm. that really lands. It's the remake of the Ringu. Yeah, and um, so it comes 2002. Yes, or is it 2001? 2001, 2002. One yeah. of those, one of those ones. Like very earlier than the Grudge. Earlier than the Grudge, and, for sure. And and also based off of a book, if I'm not mistaken, right? Like Correct. A series of books, which you actually yeah, I'm reading, reading right now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just about through. Yeah. I, I can't really spoil the ending and yeah. how it all goes, but it is a really it's a fantastic book if you ever want to check it out. Yeah. And um, it's it's uh, they actually weirdly do stay quite true to the source material in that regard as well. Okay. I mean, in in terms of the the layout of the story is very much the same. Mm -hmm. um, so in the original book, it's all about a reporter named Asakawa, okay. and um, he stumbles upon the 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 cursed videotape. Yeah. Um, it's also like through his like nephew or his niece or something as well. Yeah, he's he's related to um, it's I think it's his niece. Mm -hmm. And so there is actually, in the book itself, there is a similar cold open uh, that we see in the American remake as well, oh, okay. where she's at home studying for finals. It's uh, in the middle of summer and she goes down into her kitchen to get a can of Coke. And so she's put like Coke on ice or something like that just to stay, uh, stay cold. <laughs> but yeah. she feels a presence behind her. So the difference, I guess, is uh, in the American remake and the Ringu as well. It's the uh, inclusion of television, and the, right. we have in the Japanese we have Sadako, and in the English version we have Samara. That's right. And so we have that. We have the Anglic Anglici Anglicization. Anglic Anglicized. <laughs> I don't Angli know how to say Angli it. Ah, Anglicization. Anglicization. It becomes anglicized. There you go. <laughs> Jeez, we're going to have to cut that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... Um, so there is actually... They do take that time to actually adapt it to an American audience. Yes. Which I do appreciate it. Mm. When, the, when, the, grudge, better. when yeah. the grudge tried to force into a box, it, it, it struggled. Yes. Well, especially when you're in a position where like you and I know, and, and many people who would know, right? Like you can't... You, you just can't do certain things as... Americans in a different location or whatever when it comes to these kinds of things. Yeah, they just stand out too much. And it's, they do. And, it, and, it's, and it's drawing. Like you can, it, is. it takes away from like the whole thing. The horror aspect is still good, but yeah. it just it, it keeps on making you question, why? The, why, why are why, we in Japan? Why are we there? Yeah. <laughs> it's so, like, I know the original yeah. curse was here, but what, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, it's like, why, why does it have to be the, like, whatever the case, right? But this time, absolutely, takes place in... You know, United States. It actually has like a prominent, prominent feature there. Where is this? I can't tell where this is filmed, but oh. it's like it looks like I don't have a good idea of what um, for the United for these, States. For these Americans, kind of looks like Oregon, or um, maybe I, like somewhere with lots of moss. Maybe I'm like trying Maine to remember because like they. That. I'm not sure where the where the curse initiated, like where the well is. I yeah. believe it was on like on some kind of island. She has to take an island off of the coast of somewhere. Yeah. So it, it's, I mean, this doesn't really narrow it down, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I don't believe it's in the Northeast, so it might be Oregon. It might be Washington. Like it's I'm just wondering where it's filmed. I don't know that yeah. it's actually like grounded in a certain state or anything like that. But it could be any. But but we know it must be close enough to the coast because there's tons yeah. of forest and there's tons of this area and it's not very very populated. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, like it's 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 good. It has like a lot of really good features to it. I don't think it had any. I mean, there's a lot of specific features, uh, like specific um, scenes that are you know very very. Um, famous yeah but i wouldn't say it was like 
like it won't it won't be like every single thing like oh everybody knows it's not really in the zeitgeist except for the yeah. Samara girl right well I think that they're like uh, let's let's talk about the the, the opening to this because sure, sure, sure. it has yeah. um uh, the two girls that are <laughs> in the bedroom at the very beginning yeah and just, just... they they look very very Japanese <laughs> actually okay. the long hair A that calls uniform. exactly and <laughs> uh-huh. it, it, okay. it, it does call back to that uh, okay. anyways and it is a strange i don't know strange outfit for them to be wearing and <laughs> super straight hair <laughs> right but you right. got that hair straightened yeah but um but yeah it's it sort of makes you think because i think people would have seen the advertisements or mm. at least maybe know a little bit about this film going in right. it's kind of hard to remember because i think some people knew about it but the hair really does of, of the girl does resemble um samara so um, she kind of resembles her in the beginning, very sure. pale. And right. uh, this movie is so green. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it has like that. Just yeah, green filters, especially and... near the end. Yeah, when they're on the in the forested island area, like it yeah. definitely has that. Like yeah. this, this whole like um, there's a whole bunch of horror movies back to back to back that have like really strong filtering, and even with Saw, Saw is very green. And yeah. it's it, there's a lot of movies that are kind of like this. I, think I was just, I was even going to mention even the, like when we did the collector because yes. it was even brought up in that too. Yeah. Right? Like we remember seeing filters when they change from certain aspects. Yeah, and that was like what 2009. That movie was quite blue. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so we have like a lot of these things. Yeah, they, I guess they were really experimenting with a lot of these different different. Aspects yeah, I, I think it, somebody but, influenced yeah. it. If I'm not mistaken, Soderbergh okay. was uh, a big influence on, mm, sure. on yeah. using that kind of technique. Mm-hmm. And I'm not against it or anything like that. It's just very noticeable because right. it's not as not done right now. We're in the era of more the people aren't using thousands, as yeah. much color anymore in film, and mm. so it was notable at least for being that distinct. It's like very high contrast, very dark. You can see like lots of shadows. Right. So like, yeah. and, and it actually feeds in well too with the overall design of Samara as well because right. you have you have her being such a dark character face shrouded in hair right. and um, and oh. also just being kind of dead as well that green filter sort of adds to her creepiness that's true I, I will I will say that one thing where it gets like quite dark is like when they're in the when she's in the well briefly right yeah it's like it's kind of hard if you don't know what to look for it's kind of hard to tell like mm-hmm. with like the scratches on the wall and all this kind of stuff it is a little bit more bleak that yes. way but yeah most of the time that contrast is going to show you like clearly life and death type of situation right? yeah um or like scary not scary you know like when something's about to happen but not really so yeah yeah so i mean the beginning it's um one thing that, that, that i do find really interesting when you compare the books to the movie mm-hmm. is um that introduction of technology into it where okay. you have technology sort of being um i mean at this time i think television was so common with everybody mm-hmm. and it's just interesting that they kind of use it as the medium for the monster in this case now when you mentioned beforehand from the book it was sudoku sudoku no what did you say sudaku sudaku yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> not so the like, sudoku puzzles no the sudoku so i'm just like wait so like one by nine like if you solve it then <laughs> no <laughs> just right. no. no sorry <laughs> so, can you explain a little bit of what what is Sadako then? Or what, yeah. yeah. So in, in the original book, you have Asakawa, yeah. who's a journalist. Okay. His niece dies, and he, he's trying to solve sort of a mystery of four deaths that occurred at the same time. Right. Yes, so yes. he was actually, uh, he, get, he gets in a cab at the very beginning of the uh, story, and he's talking to the cab driver who informs him of, of a strange death that occurred right next to his cab. Okay. And there's also a short series that you can actually watch on YouTube that is the it parallels the original source material pretty well. Okay. It's not great, but it's it's interesting anyways to watch because you sure. can see how it, this story sort of evolves over the oh. iterations where you see, you know, between this and then the TV show adaptation to the Ringu, now to the American adaptation. Right. So it's kind of like a game of telephone where people added layers and layers to it. Okay. And so with the original story, you have, um, you have Asakawa and uh, he's kind of got this counterpart, Ryuji, who's sort of a spiritual specialist and a philosopher. Mm-hmm. So he's a, affiliated with the university. And he is a very nebulous character in the book, too, because they're trying to solve this mystery of the cursed videotape because as he's trying to solve these, uh, who, how they were caused, how they died, mm-hmm. they do actually go to this sort of resort or this hideaway um, place, and he, that's where he finds the cursed videotape, much like the modern ring. Oh, okay. And so in that so thing, in they both... do parallel. In yes. both stories, and it is definitely a videotape. Then it is, okay. yeah, yeah. So it is a VHS oh, okay. 
cassette. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But yes, like for now, those of you who don't have like a yeah. VCR, <laughs> VCRs, which yeah. you can't really play anymore. But yes, those things. Okay. So I do appreciate like what's what's there. There's that overlap in that it's they're both found in the cabin. Yes. And that it was for people who died of mysterious circumstances. Right. You have the journalist overlap between the two, and so in that it is actually quite. Uh, there, there's a lot of like fidelity, I guess, to the original source material. Okay. Um, and then, of course, Naomi Watts is a great uh, character in it as well. I think she plays... I think she's actually used really well as an American actress in this because mm-hmm. whereas Sarah Michelle Gellar that was there for the billing credit, realistically, mm-hmm. and it wasn't that... I know what they're trying what, to do. They're, they're trying to recreate for, the fire yeah. that they kind of generated yeah. with the ring. But I don't think that she's as successful as Naomi Watts because Naomi Watts really gets into this movie a lot more. Mm-hmm. And they add some things to it that are fantastic as well because she's got this strange relationship right. with um, with Noah, who is her... Or son, but... Well, oh, sorry, not her son. Uh, the the uh, her video lover. editor. Like the, yeah. he, I thought he was a private investigator Yeah, first, no, right? Yeah, I mean, no. He's, he works with... Video technology equipment. and video stuff somehow so yeah. coincidental but whatever. he seems very wealthy because he's got a lot of equipment he's, too. And he's a very nice apartment and that's yeah. what i'm trying to figure out like they're in some kind of city yeah so i know they're not like too far away from that area but whatever <laughs> the case like he has a nice apartment yeah the, even the, like a penthouse suite almost like mm-hmm. it's just kind of like you take the elevator all the way up there it's yeah. a bachelor pad of, but the, you know it's massive it's like a big studio yeah like warehouse. Has, yeah exactly and he has all these things uh, but yeah, you know, her relationship with him at first, you're meant to think like they work together, but then there's... But then he's the father of her child. Yes, which he clearly had stated that he didn't want anything to do with at yeah. some point, but then she still needs to rely on him for her work because he's so good at what he does, is what I was getting. It's just a very strange relationship because her, yeah. her son is just this sort of small man, and... It seems like he's completely... Yeah, he's... He's so mm, autonomous. He seems like he's a little bit on on the spectrum a tiny bit right like he's a little bit more like he's very serious M- yeah. maybe he, maybe he just had a really trouble when he just calls her right? rachel well that's exactly yeah, yeah. Like, the relationship is clearly not very close yeah right? but like they're 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 not very close but she's still like she's still very much his mother right? yeah it's still very much like make sure he's going to bed on time he's the sitter all but this kind of no stuff. no i would question that though because yeah. like is she really mothering him it seems like she's more taking he's more taking care of her a lot of the time in mm. in the show because um because even before the funeral or the, oh, yeah, that's the right. ceremony, he lies he's the dress. That's right. Yeah. Well, and he's also yeah, he's laying out the clothes and mm-hmm. like he's laying out his own he's tying his tie. Tying his own tie. Yeah. You know, he's he's he had doing, to be his own. Funny enough, had to be his own man type of thing. Yeah, right? exactly. Because very quickly. I see because Noah's mean. not really present in this. It's just right. I don't I don't really know what to make of the family dynamics in it and what they were mm-hmm. trying to kind of say with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is it is just sort of an interesting layer as well. Sure. And so so. The, the the funeral is probably the most iconic scare, right. um, barring maybe later in in the movie, like the hole with the TV with thing. her face. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like um, they're talking, and then you get that brilliant sound clip. I remember her face, and it's her in the it closet. Just, and yeah. there's still some movement in her as well as she's like the body's kind of turning towards right, them. Right. Yes. So, but and you get that, the unhinged jaw. And yeah. like this brown her trousers face. across the nation, right? Her, um, yeah. <laughs> but her it face was, is all like dropped. And exactly, like, it's like she died from fear. Kind exactly, of thing is kind of what they're going for. Yeah, yeah. And it's and so like with all that, it's the so the girls at the beginning, as we were alluding to beforehand, yeah. and like one of them is related to mm-hmm. Naomi Watts's um, Ra- Rachel. Rachel, sorry, Rachel and her son. Yeah, and it's her sisters. Uh, daughter, therefore making it her niece and mm-hmm. her son's uh, yeah, cousin. So th- they're related. And they're pretty close. Yeah, Apparently they're pretty close. Although we never saw this, but yeah. apparently they're very close with, with her son. Mm-hmm. So they go to this funeral, right? And that's where we get this whole thing with mm-hmm. like... And, then, and everybody's like shooken up by it. Like even the father is like totally like, yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Like he's very... There's a lot right. of like emotional neutrality in this. Yeah. Where I feel like Rachel is the one who's primarily expressing emotions versus Noah and the kid's name is Aiden, I think. They're um, they're not expressing as much emotion, right? And so it's just <laughs> she. It seems like very much her against this this I don't know this this situation, and she's intrigued by it as well. And as a <laughs> journalist, she would be. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's kind of actually she's she definitely has this weird um, work work mindset as well, right? Yeah. Like when she's at at her work and her 
boss, I think, comes over and says, like, you're fired. And she's like, no, I'm not. Like, shut up. <laughs> and, like, t- tells him to fuck off. And then, like, he's, he's like, oh, okay. okay she's, like, I guess you're not, to, yeah, I guess you're I not guess fired. I guess I'll keep like, paying you. Yeah, she's like, just, like, really, really direct at what yeah. she does. But even at that, at that scene, and then she, her sister even knows how good she is at her work, which is yeah. kind of a telltale sign, right? So she's when like, she is. She's a she's very, very good. competent As, person yeah. and character in this. And so the, and her sister solves. believes it. Yeah. So she's like, I need you to figure it out. You can talk to people through this stuff, right? Yeah. And then. There is that, that is actually a pretty good scene. She goes outside and she like, you know, bums a cigarette yeah. and she takes the light <laughs> from, the from the teenagers <laughs> just to, you know, kind of blend in with that yeah. coolness. And she gets but... something, she gathers, she's information gathering yeah. slash like. Did you recognize the actor who gave her like too much information? Fresh, yeah, I, I, what's his name? Adrian Brody. Yeah. I think it's Adrian Brody. Is it Brody? Is it, is it Adrian Brody? I, oh, wait, I might be getting the two Adrians mixed up. No, it's another guy, but he was on the, um, at the time. He would have been on the OC. That was the actor. Yeah, was I'm the like, actor it's not Adrian Brody. Not Brody, pianist. sorry. Not Brody. <laughs> that would be like him as a teenager. Yeah, it's just it's like, a different Brody. It's a different I don't know Adrian. if he, yeah. he, he looks like, he looks too, oh, tor- Adrian also, Brody looks too tortured to play a teenager. Sure. No, this, it, for, for a current thing with this actor, this is like the, the kid version of, um, he was in the movie Shazam. Oh, okay. superhero. He was one of the brothers. Oh, okay. So he's like, that's the actor for it. But he's like, young, young person yeah. in this movie, because it's like 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and he gives like, oh yeah, like so and so is dead, mm-hmm. who is her boyfriend, and that's kind of what sparks this whole thing. Yeah, right? yeah. And like, there's there's another parallel, right, where mm-hmm. we have multiple deaths that occur at the same time, at the same, not and just, her, but not the same day, but like literally, the literally same the time. same time. Yes. And so, and so that's cause for investigation. Mm-hmm. And so she finds out that they're all friends, and that they kind of um, they met each other, and they kind of knew each other from. Uh, a getaway at a cabin. That's right. Essentially. Yeah. Well, they met up at that cabin or exactly. something, right? And then they were just, you know, Hanging figuring out? out what to do. Yeah, figuring <laughs> out what to do. Well, so that's the thing. Like Romantic t- getaway, probably? Half and half, I think. She was there with her boyfriend, but yeah. the other two people, I think they were, they were friends of his. Okay. Something like this. But then... Just your... They wanted to... Yeah, just like just like a hangout kind of thing, and, she, and he invited her with them. Yeah, like grad camping or something. Right, something like this, right? Except for they look all way too young to be grad camping. They look like... I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> Whatever the case. Sense. But they even mentions like they wanted to watch a football game or something, and they even tried to like tape over said football game so they could watch it again <laughs> okay. with the with the right. cursed tape, I think is what it was, which is what made them watch it in the first place, because they were like, oh, why can't we tape over this? So they watched what it was. Oh. And this is what, kind of what sparks the whole thing. And they did that at 10 p.m., hence why... Yeah. They died at 10 p.m. or 10 o'clock or whatever it was. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so that's like that's that's a wrinkle I missed the first the football game. That's a hilarious detail. But Something it, was mentioned might... about a yeah. football game. Yeah. 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 Well, okay, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, well, that's why they wanted to use the tape. Right. And then they're like, oh, it's a blank tape. Let's just do whatever. And then. Okay, well, you you remember if you grew up in this era, like, yeah. the process of recording TV, uh, mm-hmm. recording your shows yep. on things, labeling them. And yeah. so, <laughs> and then you know. Hopefully not. <laughs> Like not recording over something, something later, else, yeah. or your dad tapes a like literally tapes a football game over right. something that you're recording. You're yeah. like, I was watching that. Yeah. Like, like half a Simpsons episode yeah. is then taped over by another show. You're like, damn I it! I never see the ending of this episode. Yeah, which is a hilarious problem in the book. Actually, there you go. Because um, there's the there's the creepy video itself, or like the killer video aspect of it. Mm-hmm. But then um, the they record over the ending of it, which tells them how to remove the curse. Oh. as a joke oh and so um so it's actually like cut off i don't know if it was the the characters i'm i'm like three quarters of the way through the book so i'm not quite sure not what quite exactly there, happened yeah, there right. um but yeah like they cut off the end of it which actually tells them how to remove the curse of sure. the video okay. now that actually becomes very important in this because spoiler alert mm-hmm. making a copy saves you that's right and in, because and it passes it along to passes the curse else. Along. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's... I mean, it, this does become more important in the the movies that come after this, Rings and Ring 2, mm-hmm. um, because it's... I mean, it gets silly in those ones, but... <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, because it, it, it does take... Um, <laughs> like, it comes out only a few years afterwards, if I'm not mistaken, right? The yeah. Ring 2. It's about as good as The Matrix 3, we'll okay. put it that way. <laughs> it's a watchable, but... Not it's, really it's, a good sequel. It's silly. To it. yeah. It's silly and okay. not scary. This is this is the only one you need to watch. Right. Realistically, this makes sense. And so, um, and likewise, you know, that's 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 how you do get rid of this curse. Right. So, what's interesting about this movie is it's like you're solving the mystery, and there is actually a viable way to beat the curse as well. Right. And so it's um, so I, I actually 
I like movies where it's not so fatalistic, I guess. I was just going to say, so like last time you had asked that question, yeah. right? About like, what do you think? Because with Juwan and the yeah. Grudge, it's like inevitable no that you're going to die. Right. There's no escape. Yeah. So you might as well just, yeah, exactly. Just walk in <laughs> like, okay, you got me. Yeah. But then this one actually, but at the same time, you're condemning somebody else to it. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah, it actually reminds me of uh, It Follows. Yep. In that. That's. that's yeah, that's what it was. Thank you. I was actually thinking. I was like, "What was this again?" That's another one. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, we watched that along. one together, right? I think we did. Yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, it's it's a similar idea, and that's why it follows is so effective too. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I really love it follows for its simplicity, and same with the ring. It's a simple, but very clear mechanism for the horror movie. Right. Right. Where it's like you watch the movie, it kills you seven days later. You get mm-hmm. a phone call. If you're not near a phone, we're not clear on what happens. Do you get an email? Do you get paged? Right. Right. <laughs> that's right. I just so did a message. Pick up your like, phone. Right. <laughs> like, what do you get? Right. Yeah, that's so. exactly it. So if you don't pick up the phone, but it still happens. It's maybe that seven days is just to get your affairs in order. It's yeah. like a courtesy call. <laughs> Samara's like, this is, this is yeah, I'm going to give you get, the one thing I didn't have. Yeah. Uh, if you need some life insurance... That's a nice thing to do, right? It now. is. Yeah. At least it's not right away. It's yeah. not like seven the phone days. could just blow up. Yeah. I mean, it could be a very different curse. That's true. Now, it is actually oh. important in this one too. The seven days do matter mm-hmm. because we come to find out uh, as we go through the movie. She gets to the island, yeah. And um, you know, there's the she weird kind part with the, the area. Well, yeah. There's the weird part with the horse and stuff, where yes, she she becomes sort of cursed herself, and that was. Sort of an iconic visual of this movie too. Yeah, it's like, it's like the, all horses hate hate the cursed people now. Yeah, because they do. The original cursed person hated horses. Yeah, <laughs> something like this. Yeah. Well, she was torturing the horses essentially, like because daddy liked yeah, them. Yeah, she was getting in their heads and just yeah. making them commit suicide. Essentially, yeah, essentially. And so Jesus. Um. So yeah. Anyway, so she's on this ferry, goes out to the island. Mm-hmm. Horse commits suicide in the water, and it looks pretty real for. That's a really good, like you know what I mean? A, yeah, that was. It was like, who was did like, this Aw. CGI? Like, get them, get them a job in the modern era. Yeah. Jeez. Well, they, I think it even had like some prosthetics too, right? Because it jumps off, and you can, right. you can kind of tell because the horse kind of does like a little. <laughs> yeah. There. Doesn't really look real, but it's still real enough because it's, it's not a stuffed animal, right? Least, yeah. but it's better. Than it lands in there, and then it like yeah, it's like kind of swimming. Yeah. And then yeah, it gets pulled under, and then it's unfortunate, but. Yeah, that's... Horse, horse girls everywhere were very sad about this. Oh, but they were, they were and, uh, ter- terribly sad. But it's um, I I like when she first watches the video. The mm-hmm. actual video itself is extremely effective. Mm-hmm. So creepy. I think it's yeah. uh, really well put together. You get sort of um, well, it's, it's very art- fil- it's very artsy. As no way you put it, it's a very yeah. artsy film. It is, and it's like. I could see a bunch of grad, like some kind of grad university students. Yeah, like, like this, this is like, you got a budget of $500. Yeah, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> and it means something. something. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Show it to like 20 people mm-hmm. and then send it off to like the National national Inter- in, Independent film, yeah. film Studies or whatever it is. And then, yeah, this, is, this would win like maybe third place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Assuming that it didn't kill the judges. <laughs> yes, exactly. But it's, but it's exactly what that is. It's very, it's so like professor, scene, we accidentally scene. made a curse tape. Yeah. <laughs> Just see that's a good comedy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we accidentally made a movie that kills people because it was too artsy. <laughs> too artsy. <laughs> but yeah. it's interesting too because in the original book, um, yeah. the mechanism of the the videotape is mm. that um, essentially Sadako's mother was psychic, and mm. okay. Sadako had a, oh, right. sort of a okay. greater concentration of those powers, mm. and so she is. Uh, the you know the the well is underneath the cabin in both cases. Yes. Right. So when, where she originally it. watches the film there, yeah, that's where Sadako and Samara are at rest in right. the well. Right. And so, um, and so in the case of the book though, um, it's kind of important because the the video she sort of hijacks the airwaves and mm-hmm. she psychically burns. Uh, her thoughts onto the Into tape. Into the tape, that's right. And, and, and this is the case for Samara as well. Mm-hmm. But it's, um, but it, the videotape in the original isn't as spooky. It's very specific images. Right. And yeah. it's not a videotape necessarily. They, the characters are good detectives in it and they figure out that it's, that there's like a kind of a curtain that co- keeps coming down and they realize it's blinking and right. they realize like that memories or something that's right. when they yeah. realize they're dealing with the supernatural is right. that they're like oh this wasn't recorded on any camera right. and it's a good creepy part too yeah, it is good this yeah. is this it's is good reveal this is blinking mm-hmm. and so 
Um, there's like an image of a volcano because her mother commits suicide by throwing herself into a volcano. This is the Japanese one, obviously. Yeah. In the movie, um, she actually throws herself off a cliff. Correct. On, yeah. I on the island. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And she sees she... her father in the window, or father. There's a very odd like shot of like people becoming maggots, or like. Well, people are dead and maggots are coming out of their bodies. Yeah. There's some really interesting shots. Yeah. There. Like, it's... it's Like, I, it's I feel like it's creepy. I think it's definitely it's, creepy. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, if you were to watch this, it, it you, would, would be, you would believe that you get a call and somebody would, would say... You would that's when you would expect days. if you watch yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. If, if anybody could find that on... Oh, I'm sure you actually... Somebody's probably cut that scene just yeah. on YouTube as, like... A, oh, I wonder if somebody's right? put that, like, on a VHS and left it in a cabin somewhere. That would be hilarious. Oh. That's a great practical joke. That That is cruel. That's wonderful. <laughs> that's mean. Yeah. But, you know... I mean, to all to one's own. I think that would be hilarious because you're like, I don't know this. I don't know this. Like, yeah. what, what is the this? fuck? And then if you've never seen the ring. <laughs> yeah. If you've never seen the ring, you would never know, right? But that's that's true. Um, but yeah, no, it's a it, it, lot of lot of little scenes. Like, the, there's the ladder, obviously, and then yeah, the horses, the maggots, as you mentioned, the woman in the mirror, the woman in the, in the mirror. She's behind her. Yeah. Oh, that one, that one was creepy. Yeah. Um, got I was, a little, got a little shudder there, Anthony. I did. I, well, I was just because I was just thinking. Because I, I, this always happens whenever you have, of course, in in film in film tech, right? Whenever you're, uh, you're doing cinematography, if you have it where your main character is not in the focus and there's like a little bit of room to that side, you know something's about to appear in that area, or it's going to yeah. be like somebody's going to enter that area. And this is a little bit farther in when she goes back to his house and yeah. finds out more stuff. But then, you know, three times it goes back and there's nothing there, and then the last time. Something, something finally appears. Yeah. So getting a little ahead of myself, but that's that's like yeah. a typical thing for it. So it just reminds me of this. Yeah. But she does a good job. Like Rachel gets onto the island, and she does a good job of locating the family members mm -hmm. and um, family members and the doctor and all this kind yes. of stuff. And she gets yeah. gets this background information about mm -hmm. um, about Sada uh, Samara and kind of this this film and where this all originated from. That's right. Because what does she actually identify in the film? Because she, she gets together with Noah, mm -hmm. and they're kind of breaking down what they're seeing in the scenes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And because this is where she uses his brilliant video analytic skills. That's right. And That's you actually she get, uses him, yeah. <laughs> and then you get the telegraph that the fly comes out of the TV, too. And yeah. that's going to telegraph later on that of what's going to happen. And she's getting closer and closer to her exactly. date, right? It's getting worse and worse. Yeah. 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 So, But I can't remember what clue they exactly identify from the film to help find the location that they're going to, the Is island. That, uh, the lighthouse. The lighthouse. The lighthouse. Oh, oh yeah, because so. she's got the big book of lighthouses. <laughs> right, okay, so... I love the big book of lighthouses so you and know I what? want a copy. 20 years, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. that would have seemed believable. It would <laughs> be, yeah. Because people would go to the library, somebody, and there's like all these books that she has yeah. around. Clearly she's going through lighthouses. But then someone's like, here's this last book that I happen to have that you haven't gone through yet. She yeah. grabs it, she's like, okay, I'm going to look, and then... Happens to find the one. Lighthouse. I mean, Google ruined a lot of mystery solving. <laughs> realistically, because like it used to be so much more fun to follow threads in real life and get to. You can understand people's progression, but now it's just like, oh, what'd you do? Oh, I googled it, or I, I looked online and I saw this. Like, oh, okay, that's that's easy. Because now it's just like it's. I mean, if they were to do this again, not saying they should, but if they were to do it again and they move it to like, oh, it's like on a website that the website. Uh, you can only see it if you like you type it in correctly this way or something. Only a few people know the IP address, whatever, right? I this think you're you're, you're, you're describing fear.com and we might watch it. Oh, we should watch that then. Maybe it's, that is what it is. It is but, the most bizarre film. Right, because you said it's like not how the internet works, but it's how the internet works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Getting ahead of myself with fear.com, but like it's yeah. the most it's like it's also a movie that was like made by people who had the loosest idea of what the internet might be. <laughs> well, no, it's just how to make a movie. Oh, okay. That <laughs> might like, just be bad, bad quality writers. It's not even bad. It's odd. Like, oh, you're watching okay. and you're like, what is happening? Because oh, okay. it's like, it's put together in the strangest way. It's Anyhow, just confusing. confusing. It's confusing. Okay. Yeah, very confusing. Okay. And it's just, it's one of those movies that makes you think, is this a, is this like a money laundering thing? <laughs> oh, I see. Because <laughs> it kind of... Like the room? <laughs> yeah, like, right. it's not as bad as the room. <laughs> like, it's not as like iconic as the room either, but... Right. It's just like it's, it's like a, why was this made this way? Yeah, it's a very okay. strange experience of a sure. movie. Oh, maybe we and should it, watch. You know, it is that, actually yeah. in this era too of it is. Um, of of everything. Shout out to uh, Fear dot com. Maybe we'll <laughs> maybe we'll take a look into that too. Yeah, but we'll see how many drugs were or money was laundered in the making of that. 
This one actually had a pretty good budget, though. The Ring has a good it budget. Yep. It what was it like? One hundred and thirty million or something, something like, that, like yeah. that. And it made and it made a decent money back. Hence, yeah. Hence the sequels. Like, I, this so. is a staple and a temple in yeah. the in in the horror genre. I mm-hmm. think a lot of people were thought thought it was very scary. And again, rightfully so. Just like The Grudge. Yeah. At the time, and for people who you know were really into that kind of thing, you would you would. It, it takes away from like your suspension of disbelief enough that mm-hmm. you can, you know, kind of if you're alone at night in the dark, you can kind of believe that was a thing, especially if you get a call at night. I think so because most people wouldn't call at night, right? So yeah, it's one of those things. Well, I think too, like horror is a lot like comedy, where what's scary ten years ago isn't scary today. Ah, and so I don't know. Can you can you say though that things that aren't funny or that are funny ten years ago aren't funny today? I would say that. You know they don't they don't land with the same sort of recency. So if you take mm-hmm. Robin Williams for instance, or like Adam Sandler, or uh, even someone like Dan Carlin, well, I say it's pop like pop culture was definitely yeah. But but I think oh, like I okay. but you know comedy builds over things, time, yeah. and so does horror. Mm-hmm. Where it's like it's sort of it's um you know it's like it'll make you laugh harder if it's relevant today and you're like you're living in that world and in that moment. Mm-hmm. You know if you have somebody like I don't know making like Trump jokes and they're like they're landing it's like it's because it's recency oh of course right, right. they're not going to yeah. land the same way as like you know if you had like a Reagan joke or something like that right it's just going to be different yeah it implies people actually know like yeah they're intelligent what's going on they remember this right yeah but but horror is the same way it's like this mm-hmm. one obviously a, a V like a VHS tape isn't going to be as terrifying uh, in, okay. in this contest it's so like, so hence why I was talking about like if website. they were to remake this yeah. as a website or something right okay. and they've done that they've done like yeah. dark web they've right. done like um uh They've done. I mean, they've done. They've done at Maybe. least some internet ones that are yeah. in in the same vein. Yeah, and so it have to be an app or something, I guess. At this point, I mean, they, they tried to sort of do it with yeah. Slenderman. Also, uh, yeah. one of the also Never, a, a I, money laundering I, scheme. <laughs> I thought the idea of the Slenderman was actually pretty brilliant, especially because that was a work of fiction from high school students making movies. I thought right. that was actually really cool. Yeah, um, but of course, yeah, because it became so popular, they're gonna. You yeah, know, capitalize on. on yeah, but they capitalized on it like twenty years too late. <laughs> exactly, it was a what weird was the timing point? for right. it. Exactly, I was like, who had the rights for this? They were hanging on to those. Yeah, with their it's like oh, okay, this is the perfect time. Or we just we should get rid of it because we're going to lose it. Tangentially, we're coming back to the ring now. Yes, as we come back though, yeah. this is why you know the ring is at the time made in a really good time. Yeah, and you can see its influence. Yes, yeah. and and Rachel like talking with the doctor I also did find the doctor was quite interesting because it's like although she's she's in it for one scene I thought she'd be a little bit more more um, important later but she's only in the one scene she says yeah I knew this I knew that they had because she gives like the the exposition doctor yeah. right she goes in and out <laughs> but then she even says something along the lines of um, I was happy like I didn't, I didn't she being a doctor did not care where a little girl ended up because yeah. that girl was proving to be more trouble for the whole island yeah. And not just for, like, the family or something. So nobody really cared what happened to her kind of yeah. thing, right? Which kind of makes you feel bad until you get to the end and more so for it. But. Sometimes this makes me think this is why Aiden, the child, is in it. Like, mm-hmm. why he's in it. Um, because he's sort of... He reminds me of, like, a Thomas Hardy character from one of his books, Father Time. Okay. Where it's like, he's supposed to be... He's kind of like a small child who acts like a man. Right. And... Samara is sort of this girl who you perceive to be sort of innocent and mm. um, kind of on the wrong end of yeah. unfair something, treatment. Something bad because she has that innocent childlike quality. But right? that's broken in the end because mm. she's not. Mm-hmm. She's sort of she's this... She's actually like... Mm-hmm. I mean, she, she turns out to be this really devilish force. Sadistic creature. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Where it's like she's not childlike at all. She's not somebody who's just... Who suffered an unfortunate thing. It's like... I mean, she did. But like what she's become and yeah. what what they've created by the right. like what her parents have created with these actions and this is something that's kind of alluded to I believe in the second movie which I haven't watched mm-hmm. I read up a little bit on it but right. from what I understand because in the this one we don't know the real father and the mm-hmm. real mother all we know is that they wanted a child couldn't have a child they left they came back with a child passed it off as their own but then bad things started happening right yeah so this child I'm sure the book will even you're not even quite finished the book. Maybe yeah. in the series of the books, that yeah. they're, they're probably going to talk about that more. Yeah, well, I mean, um, it's more... I mean, it's a little bit different in the books and the series because... Mm-hmm. Um, it, and it, it touches a little bit more on sexuality in that one, oh, much okay. more so. Sure. Because um, she's older in the books because she's 
the child in this one is about 10 to 12 years old Something from like what that, I yeah. gathered roughly Aiden's age yeah exactly yeah. and so but in the books she's older and um, she's um, like I don't even think this is biologically possible but like in the book she's a hermaph- hermaphrodite she's described oh, that way right okay. and she's subjected to uh, rape right in the book and then also a subsequent murder oh, and okay. she's murdered by a doctor in the book uh, mm. as far as I I've watched the miniseries again haven't gotten to the end of the book so I can't can't effectively spoil this for people sure but um so there's there has a lot there's a lot more to do with like sexuality in that one sure and it being sort of the linchpin of what happens in the in the overall ending which is very different i wonder if that's why maybe the american because the american and japanese films of course like they they definitely have like different things for their audiences yeah as we talked about with the grudge and maybe making her this young innocent style child i think is more appealing to watch than yeah whatever this was right well yeah and like it was like there is some really peculiar stuff in in the book itself because ryuji his counterpart he's sort of this anarchist in a way okay and so he's like this he's he's along for the adventure where they know they're going to die and they're doomed and he's very okay with it and he almost celebrates their dying in the book interesting and it's very odd too because he's also a serial rapist in the book like and so he's an anarchist and he wears all of these different faces mm-hmm. sort of throughout the book and Asakawa is sort of uh, he's the main character he's the reporter yeah. and he's very conventional in his approach and he's scared out of his wits for right. the most part because he, he feels truly that he is doomed and he never but he's interesting because he never actually does anything about Ryuji's crazy actions and his antics that is strange and so yeah. and it's he, but he uses him I guess yeah, yeah well he just he lets him yeah he he sort of harnesses his chaotic right potential i guess in, in solving the mystery mm-hmm. and um but yeah he's a very very interesting dynamic between these two characters i could see why it did become such an interesting book but yeah i think the books had a lot more to do with um way different themes sure and they're treated very differently too because it's japanese literature from a different time because yeah. it's the it was the early 90s where that became very famous i think in 1992 was when the book was written oh, and wow. so you know we're already 10 years off of that that's right and this and is 10 years going into and this is like even for the exactly for now the you have the translation so, into yeah. american yeah book and everything as well mm-hmm. and so uh or a movie rather mm-hmm. um so you know and i do like the ring and the urgency that it creates with the the seven days as well because mm-hmm. also in addition to her watching the film Noah Aiden watches, watches it a while. Oh, yeah. Well, Noah watches it. Yeah, Noah, right? Noah watches it with and her. And then Aiden watches it exactly. after him, which is, it's important why. Yes. That's, right, that's the case. And yeah. so she's trying to solve this desperately. Mm-hmm. And uh, while she's on the island too, um, is it her father? Uh, Samara's, Samara's father, father, father that she yeah. finds. Played by Chris, and, uh, yeah, Chris Cox, I think it was. Right? Okay. Or, sorry, Brian, Brian Cox. Sorry, Brian Cox. Is that also Brian Cox? That, that's Brian Cox. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because we also, talked about we, this. We just watched yes. Jane Doe as well. Yeah. Jane Doe one, right. Yeah. Okay. And Stryker. Right. Right. I know. And I was like, oh, that's funny. That was the same thing. He's in a lot of these things. Okay. Yeah, interesting. I told my wife the same thing. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's the same guy from there. And he's also in, yeah, Stryker from, from the original X-Men series. Yeah. X2. <laughs> X2. Still good. <laughs> one of the best ones. They yeah. can't make a third X-Men movie. Uh, it's impossible. Well, they're going to try. They're going to try. <laughs> He also kills himself in the most melodramatic way of all time, though. Like, mm. it's just very... Oh, yeah. He's just, like, <laughs> he takes... The, the right. man takes a toaster bath to the extreme. Not even just a toaster. It's, like... He takes everything. Tons he, of wiring. Like, yeah. he, he makes sure that he does He's not like, walk away from this. He's like, I am dying yeah. from this. It's I'm like, like, I'm done. And, Bro, get a gun! <laughs> and now that we talked about this, because that's right, that's right after the scene I mentioned that it's him. Mm. Like she, so she's on the island... She's talked with him. She leaves. And I think she goes... Does she return to the island or does she just stay on the island? Because I think she goes to... Does she go back or does she stay? But then she ends up going back to the house. She tries getting inside, like knocking on the door, but doesn't answer. He goes in. She goes in, finds the tape, but not not the, the ring tape, but like another tape that allows her to kind of get some more exposition as to who Samara was yeah. and how that she was being like... Uh, not tested on but like you know looked into like she was at a, I mean, she, she was, was being a assessed and she was also being like yeah. uh she kind of gets uh put up in the barn later on well too. that was what was that so it was making it was making her mother feel something like just off or something like that. yeah she was being sad because so she then because essentially yeah. samara's powers are to like make you see things that's right and so mm-hmm. she was going she was driving her mom uh, the mom crazy so then the father 
played by Ryan Cox, put her into the barn yeah. above it. It was like a, that, and that's where we get the ladder. That's right. That's where we get the ladder. And then it's also why the horses, mm-hmm. she didn't like horses because it kept them up. She kept them up all night. Yeah. Or they kept them kept her up all night, and she got them to commit suicide because Daddy liked the horses. That's yeah. The whole thing there. Yeah. And then that's when the mother, I guess, yeah, she goes to the well, right. And we get like that whole ending scene of what happens yeah. to her, right? <laughs> so it wasn't her father that killed her, it was actually or tried to kill her, I should say. It's the mother that actually right. did this and then committed suicide. And they sort of yeah. yeah. Did they conspire together to kill her? Oh probably. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't have put it past them. Yeah. And and that's essentially where we get the, the idea of seven days. Is right. that she, she survives for seven, seven days. days. Last yeah. thing she sees is a ring. Yes. I'm not exactly yeah. yeah I'm not exactly sure that um, that same idea was carried out in the books, but I actually really like the lore here is yeah. cool. Yeah, like that's that's it makes the seven days make sense. Yeah, and then it's not just an arbitrary number. Exactly, yeah. and then yeah. also it gives a a reason for the name of the movie as well. That's right. Well, except for the ring of the telephone. Okay. Yeah. True. Right. Yeah. So that's what I always thought. Of oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Up until I saw okay. the film, right? Okay. So it's like a play on for both yeah. of them. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. And it's also, I guess it's, I think the book, what mm-hmm. it's supposed to be is it's sort of a cyclical pattern. Yeah. And so. And all the series of the books are. Yeah. Because I think that, one of them yeah. is called Loop. Yep. As well. Yep. And Spiral. And Spiral. Yep. Yeah. None of them are like that. Yeah. Yeah. All of them are called something like that, except they're not called Circle. Yeah. There's no, there's <laughs> no, no circle. Circle. Yeah. yeah. In the end, Noah, um, like she thinks she's solved it, solved the curse by retrieving Samara's body and, and putting her yeah to rest. But, but she didn't yeah, yep. surprise Samara's released <laughs> yes so okay. she's now become like yeah and this is also where we get Aiden saying like you yeah you, you know, weren't supposed to do you weren't so supposed to Aiden do that was actually in communication with her yeah because well. yeah. he gives like the the creepy kid drawings and everything in the beginning too yeah. it's like I like how you say that as if it's like a staple of horror it is it's, it's, it's no it absolutely like it's is a thing. it's <laughs> like these take these kids yeah. crayons away and yeah. like Jeez. Well, how, then how would they know the plot? <laughs> no, it's, it's actually... Like, this is like the yeah. first time... Is this the first time it's done in horror? No. Poltergeist? Couldn't be. Is there... I feel like there's creepy kid drawing in Poltergeist. But I think there's... Maybe not necessarily horror films, but I think it wasn't. Are, it wasn't a thing at this point, I don't think. May, well, because I'm... I'm, I'm sure I'm it happened before. Of, I'm reminded of some like 80s films. Again, not necessarily horror, but I'm reminded of some films... From, far back that had kids drawing something that had to do with something in the plot. Sure. Yeah. Maybe not scary, but something yeah. to do with this. Right? But now we get like you're getting full on the conjuring and you're getting yeah. full on Well even that one we mentioned um uh uh, it follows. Yeah. Is it somebody drawing like the face of whatever it was or something that they were drawing something in it or like I don't know. It's somebody become a staple in horror yeah. for sure. Yeah, Just yeah, yeah. the the drawing. Somebody should make a montage of all of those pictures. Yeah. Be it pictures being drawn. Yeah. Just once. I would like one of these people to be just a great artist and get like a perfect <laughs> depiction of it. Like there's Bagul, I guess. They get kind of Bagul like, and the Sinister Like as well. Heroes? Did you ever watch Heroes? No. One of the characters in it was a, his power was that he could predict the future by painting. Oh. So, or he could yeah, see the future guy. and he could, and he was a good painter. So he just always painted the future. That's what it was. But yeah. Kids are, kids are creepy. Yeah. In horror films. And their drawings are always going to be something that, mm-hmm. like they're, they're kind of like a staple as you mentioned with. Yeah, so this is where we get the sort of. um, I think the most iconic scare of this movie Mm -hmm. is the one at the funeral with the face. Sure, but then it's a jump scare kind of. It is, yeah, yeah, it's a jump scare. Yeah, and it really well set up (laughs) because you're not expecting it at that moment. Nope. Um, (laughs) You know what it also reminded me of is the in the Grudge when she's riding the bus and she gets like the I don't know if it jump scared you, but she gets um, she gets Kayako in the reflection of the bus window. And it oh. scares the bejesus out of me every oh. time. Because I keep forgetting. She's like, it's a bus broad daylight, and you just get right. It just, shows just get up. boned by the scare. I don't think it's <sighs> maybe. You know what? Those things are reactions. I'm sure. I, I sure yeah. have a jump scare. I'm, I'm so easy to jump scare. It's ridiculous, man. <laughs> I just can't. I, it just gets me, man. No, I can too. But I, I can usually telegraph when it's going to come. Yeah, so and like sometimes prepared, they're like, but... and I think that's why. Like, like I appreciate one that's it. not telegraphed, yeah. like this one. Yeah, like the one in the ring. Right? Exactly. It's, it's literally just the sister, like. Hard, like, and then I saw her face. Boom! It gets and then it got you. And then you're like, oh, oh that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> I can see why her dad's like, I don't know what's going on. I, I'm taking a toaster bath. Yeah. <laughs> um, this this sequence with Noah, um, mm-hmm. when she comes out of the TV, yes. is 
incredible. Very, like, very it's, cool. It's so yeah. cool because like you get the whole shot of her like, like walking great. towards the TV and out of the great. well. Yeah. I love it. I love this so much. Yeah. And it's sort of odd, Lord too, because she crawls out of the TV, and I don't know how they did the effects on her either. I think with Kayako in The Grudge, they used stop motion. And I thought that was really good. That's really effective. I thought yeah. it was super Because it's creepy. like, stop, 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 stop. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's very jittery. Yeah. And with this, I think they mix digital and practical effects to make her sort of seem ethereal, mm -hmm. but also very still substantial. I was, she's dripping yeah. wet. I was just going to say, it's kind of like a, she's digital yes. at first, and then she slowly becomes like yeah. she just came out of the well kind of Exactly. Thing. Yeah. And, and then her eyes are like milky white and her hair is yeah. like over her side. And, yeah. yeah. So it's, I think it's a it's great, good. Yeah. great scare. And, you know, and it's also deeply tragic because then she has not saved uh, Noah's life. That's right. She saved herself, but... Because of... Right. Actually, that's a good point. So she releases the body, right? She brings up Samara's body or whatever. Yeah. And then she doesn't die mm -hmm. in seven days. Yeah. But I guess that was because somebody else watched the video, so therefore it bypassed it. But yeah, here's other, the thing is like, yeah. do you have to make, I think you have to make a copy of it and get somebody to watch it. Because I think you have to uh, pass the curse so on to somebody. Is it enough uh, to just make a, di a copy and just, you know, just let it sit there? No, I think somebody has to watch it. Yeah. Because then you get the ring, uh, yeah. right, to get you the seven days. However, hold on, let me just double check this. So she's, she makes the copy. Right. She brings it to Noah, shows it to Noah. Noah watches it, obviously, and he's like, I think it's a good artsy film. Right? Yeah. Like, this is the joke he makes. So does that mean then, for that whole movie, she wasn't going to die? I think so. But then she starts still having the issues with, like, the fly comes out of the screen. And things are becoming more and more... I think that there's still, like, some sort of influence or some sort of curse on her. I don't know. That, that, that's actually a good point. Mm, yeah. like... So she was, gonna, she was fine the whole time. Up yeah. until... Well, mm. the whole time when, when she showed it to Noah, then yeah. it was fine. And then, but she still thinks she's going to die. Yeah, like the horse yeah. jumps off the thing and stuff. Yeah, still so freaks. I mean, that's right. The horse freaks out at her because maybe she's tainted. Tainted? I don't know. Do you like, just, are you just like permanently tainted then? I guess. You're just walking. Like you're, just you're walking. one of the touched. Yeah, you're yeah. one of the touched of Samara that you just happen to survive. Maybe that's what it is. Huh. I guess that but that but that, that was the only thing I was kind of confused by. Because like, that was that was another that? like yeah. pretty iconic thing about this too is the mm -hmm. blurred images of people's faces too. That's right. And, yeah, um, and she's blurred the whole time too. And so and so uh, I keep calling him Doug because of <laughs> 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 he's useless. <laughs> yes, Noah. Noah is right, also yeah. another like at least Noah's <laughs> useful though. Yo, Noah is actually permanent to the plot. Yeah, he like, is he's actually important. useful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, Doug is Doug, Doug is useless. No, I don't know. I don't know what. I, maybe that was an oversight, actually. Maybe they didn't think somebody would have thought of that 20 years later. Or maybe, like, you still are kind of cursed for the seven days you still like die. Like I said, I think you're tainted. You're I think you're tainted. It's just you're not, you're just, yeah, you're just not going to die in the seven-day time. Yeah. I don't know. Or maybe you're always constantly going to be seeing her in your head. Or maybe she's just having a shit week. <laughs> or, because at first I thought it was because she was the one that saved Samara's body and so she's right. like ha, 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 you've just cursed everyone else and I'm just gonna let you watch and suffer for it because she's evil the right. child's evil yeah so I thought that's what the original thing was but then she's like no no we have to make another copy at the end with Noah or sorry with Aiden yeah so we need to make another copy so it skips over you yeah and she so. does she leave because like she just leaves Noah's body up there too mm -hmm. And like yeah, her, his girlfriend, yeah, his girlfriend just goes, it's like, jeez, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah, rough. Rachel, Rachel's kind of a bitch too. <laughs> yeah, like call somebody, like call them. Like, yeah, she's call. freaking out. She actually watches the girlfriend go to the elevator as she yeah, that's looks dark. Away. <laughs> yeah, just, so yeah, mm -hmm. rough, rough, rough move, Rachel. Yeah, you're a savage as Those a reporter, people, but yeah, also yeah. nobody was a good person in this therapy. movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody was a bad person, yeah. except for that girlfriend, I guess, because she wasn't really like part of it. Yeah, that she much, just but... kind of caught all the hands at the end here. Yeah, but like, wasn't like good. Aiden was just like you know, kind of a well, he's a good kid, I guess, but he's kind of like he's not very respectful to his family, obviously. Yeah. But you know, he had to grow up, whatever. Yeah. Rachel's clearly just an asshole. <laughs> no, it's an ass, even bigger asshole. And then yeah, the parents of this child. Are you saying they got what was coming to them, Anthony? I'm not. I'm just saying maybe everybody in this movie just wasn't really nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is sad because Noah at the end is kind of redeemed right yeah. so we can talk a little bit about character development right sure. like, so Noah goes through this this whole thing like we're introduced to him as yeah her help or whatever it's, but it's, you it's, know there's some kind of like connection with him yeah it's kind of like kind of weird because you it's like you don't connect him as Aiden's father no it's and just it's just it's just almost a throwaway that you figure that out yes 
Well, she said, and then, yeah, she mentions, like, oh, our son watched it or yeah. something, right? And then when he's in the car with him. Mm-hmm. But the kid knows. Yeah. He didn't know. And so he, like, even confronts him about it in the car, and he gives him, like, spiel about, like, oh, like, we were so young and couldn't do it and whatever, right? Yeah. So that's why I think, like, Noah wasn't really a good guy because he, he didn't have the responsibility, right? Yeah. He didn't take the responsibility yeah. as he should have. Um, Rachel is a character I think you've, you've touched on. Yeah, quite a bit. I think she's fine. The journalist yeah. aspect to it. You know what? I will. I will I'll honestly say, like a journalist or a like a private inspector of any sort in any kind of movie like this, always has a really good character arc because they're the ones that really yeah get to push through. You really get to see through their eyes, and you get to see how far they'll go. Exactly. And for this self preservation, yeah. and then also you can see how much she actually does care about Aiden. So I will say that like I like her as a character. She's a bit of a dick, but like just that final part, yeah. right? And she is going like the the full mile. I mean. Yeah. Arguably, she is terrified. Yeah. But at the same time, she's also doing this to save her son. Yeah. At the end of the day. You right? got it. It's just, that is kind of like, you save kind of one a person, move, but another guys. person's going to, yeah. <laughs> it's unfortunate. But yeah. you know what? Unlike the grudge, where everybody just keeps on dying. Yeah. This, and it follows, just keeps on going to the next person. The next person who dies, as long as they don't show a copy. Yeah. Is we, we can maybe one. like, yeah. th- th- there, there could be an end to this. Right. Yes. They could literally like, okay, now I'm going to throw this into the bottom of said well. Yeah. <laughs> Close it up. <laughs> <laughs> so how do how do we beat it, Anthony? <laughs> how do we beat this? Or just never watch the TV. <laughs> yeah, just get a DVD. Yeah. Player. <laughs> just like, oh, do you have a VHS uh, or a VCR? No. <laughs> it's like, damn. Yeah. What what happens like like ten years in the future if, if nobody's watches the VHS and we're just like we're in the laser disc era and Samara's like. <sighs> Fuck, I don't want to get on board with this. Yeah, I don't want know? to find a VC. Who has a VCR now? And right. what's, this, what's this about Blu-ray? <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're from a different time. They show up. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I mean, I'll use like a movie, which is not a horror film, but like if you, you watch the original Jumanji film, yes? Yeah. So I don't really count them as sequels, but they are technically connected to the same thing. But like 20 years later, they made a new Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, with like Dwayne Johnson and everything. Yeah, yeah. That game literally morphs itself into a video game to keep up with the times. Oh. So if there's like a magical thing with it, although this is more psychic, I mean, you can you can work with a different thing, but it's some kind of spiritual thing, right? Yeah. You I think say we, I think we got to go stuff. internet. I think we got to go that internet. To that or an app. Like he's like, oh, here's a, there's, there's some weird app. An app that kills you. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, what's this app? And it just like turns on the screen, it watches the video, and then it just turns okay, off. Okay, question. And if, your you're watch, if you're watching it on your cell phone, <laughs> yeah. does Samara like squeeze out of the like, cell phone screen? Mm. Does she get like stuck, or mm. or do you get mini Samara? <laughs> and I mean, which so is just, worse? <laughs> just jumps out. Your <laughs> like, do you just get like a hand like that a comes out and gets you, or is it like mini Samara? You know just, what? Like... No, you know what? I'm, I wouldn't even say because this this, I mean, this app idea, right? Yeah. Theoretically. This app idea could be on any kind of device nowadays. You can have them on TVs, you sure. can have them on computers, so your phone. However, there is also, as you mentioned with um, stop motion animation and everything, <clears throat> when you have monsters or creatures that come like they should be, they should be bigger than they are, but they're squeezing through something, kind of like right, some right. kind of like like an actual liquid monster, sort of like a shapeshifter. Right. Those things are also terrifying. Yeah. So I could see definitely. Oh my God! This cre- like a hand reaches out, drops it. Runs back, freaking yeah. out, and then she like pulls herself oh, out and yeah. becomes it, like. It could be, could yeah. be really it, creepy. Absolutely creepy. Out of okay. a phone, it could still come out of a TV. It could still come out of a computer. But yeah, I think okay. a phone absolutely works. But that's what I'd say. <laughs> but I mean, would I want this to happen? No, because I think you should leave that in the past. It could, works in that we, time. We could, we could write a new script with a similar concept. You could. Let's do that. Right. But <laughs> overall, I think we need to talk about just the Ring's influence on the horror genre mm-hmm. because I think it's undoubtedly. It's lasted. Yeah. It's permeated a lot of films that came after it. Mm-hmm. Sort of the cursed piece of technology right. idea. And then also just the, the influx of J-horror that yeah. was happening too. Now, I think that, again, I never know what what is actually plagiarism and what's influence as well. Mm-hmm. This one actually stays at least true enough to the source material that I applaud it. Uh-huh. Um, versus I think the grudge sort of just well, kind of just... Did exactly what the Juan what, what Juan was, right. but it was so, with the original creator, so it's technically yeah. not played. So there there was at least some influence, yeah. and I, I really appreciate that. I, I think that maybe The Ring more than any other foreign um, foreign horror movies, maybe mm-hmm. things like Suspiria, um, and um, yeah, there's I mean there's been other classic horror movies that were foreign flicks that 
came to America. Mm-hmm. I'm just blanking a little bit on which ones those would have been. But yeah. this really did bring Japanese cinema to North America. Sure. And it did kickstart this genre where we had either essentially like j horror and Torture Born was the, the right. predominant genres of the 2000s too. So, That's right. you know, it, it had a major Im- impact on the genre. Mm-hmm. And I, as much, you can like or hate the genre. Mm-hmm. And I would argue that The Ring is probably the best version of those yep. of movies. I also really like Shudder as well. Uh, I don't know if you saw that one, but it's... on um, the camera, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so I, I really like Shudder as well. And um, well, and, and even going off that, like if you want to talk how how popular The Ring got, right? Yeah. If it did come out in 2001, 2002. Yeah. And The Grudge was like 2004, right? Just so like parodied this. in things like Siri movies. Oh, I was just going to say. So like, and it made it into a lot of ones. Yeah. You see it in like parodied in Family Guy. Family, well, yeah. Family Guy, you and I have watched, watched like a YouTube series where somebody's yeah. parodied another show and they make a reference to this. Yeah. Like the seven days thing yeah. is it's, very, very popular now. Exactly. Right? Like, I'd say that's like probably the most popular yeah. thing out of it. You get like seven days to live. Yeah. Off of a phone, but there's a lot like that comes that. out of like the creepy drawing, creepy kids. Like there's I, again, yeah. I think that that was happening already, but sure, sure, it became more prominent over yeah. the course because it was just so effective. Yeah, right? maybe they didn't do it first, but it yeah. really made it yeah pop culture. Sure, and <laughs> and personal story about this one too. Mm-hmm. Uh, after I watched it, my sister that's right scared the living shit out of me. <laughs> Dressed up as the ring girl, <laughs> yeah, in front of so she was wearing like a pure white dress. Yeah, had like super long ass hair and scared the bejesus out of me in our house that night because all we had a VHS player <laughs> it wasn't your TV like static yeah. or something in the yeah, room it was old cathode black. rays with like oh, oh my god she's a freaking is, genius man. I hate that girl <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's watching kudos that was really good worst you suck <laughs> so overall obviously the ring's classic and we wanted Absolutely. to follow up yeah. the grudge with some J-horror as well mm-hmm. um, I think we're going to watch maybe one more J-horror mm-hmm. as well I would like to either cover cover Shutter or Darkness Falls, okay. And so we can check those ones out. Um, I don't okay. think Darkness Falls was super well regarded. Okay. Fear dot com was also in this as well, but it's not J horror, right? Adjacent, so we could pick one of those ones to try out. But um, but yeah, but always good to, to jump other... back to the classics like The Ring. And I would right. say that this is classic horror now. I absolutely would say that. And if you want also want to do the autopsy of Jane Doe, yeah. which is a little bit lar- uh, farther down the path of time or whatever, yeah. it's somewhat more recent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. We can hit up any of those J-horror films or anything for the remix. All right. Well, thanks for joining me again, Anthony. Thanks to you again. Always good yeah. to have a guest. Absolutely. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope you go and check out The Ring if you have watched it a thousand times in your life. Make it a thousand and one. Yeah. Um, but it's nice to watch it again. Exactly. Nice to watch it again. And like always... Uh, there's nothing to fear but okay. fear itself and also Samara slash Sadako and Noah <laughs> no no fear Rachel <laughs> oh yeah Rachel fear she'll Rachel let you die. savagery <laughs> <laughs>